My name is Dugan Townsend, and today I'll be presenting on Nini Andig by Barbara Asiginak. Barbara Asiginak is an Anishinaabe female composer born in 1966. The Anishinaabe are an indigenous group of people located around the Great Lakes in the United States and Canada. Asiginak is an active pedagogue and performer in addition to being a notable composer. She composes for traditional Anishinaabe instruments as well as for classical genres, such as solo works, chamber works, vocal works, and orchestral works. In addition to this, she's also a classically trained pianist. She currently serves as assistant professor of composition at Wilfrid Laurier University in Ontario, Canada. Mimi Andig, which translates the Crow Dances, is an RCM level one piece. It makes use of the low register of the piano, there's rhythmic syncopation throughout, there's a wide dynamic range, there are modal melodies that don't fit into a traditional major or minor framework, as well as lyrics with an English translation. The lyrics are as follows, with the English translation saying, that crow hops around. Crow hops and jumps from side to side. Crow is happy right now. He's always dancing. Over there, he jumps across the corn and pumpkins. Andig is heading this way again. As you can see, the lyrics provide a narrative quality to the piece, which will help influence the mood and character as the student plays. In the beginning of the piece, the left hand is playing the lowest A on the piano, which will be fun for the student to play the very lowest note on the piano. They have to play with in a short detached rhythm, which will make use of the arm. It's important that the student doesn't build up too much tension in the fingers when playing these repeated notes and that they abide to the pianissimo dynamics throughout the piece. When the right hand comes in, it's syncopated with the left playing on the off beats while the left hand continues to play on the strong beats. The right hand is sustained while the left hand is separated. The right hand is also accented and played at a louder dynamic while the left hand is shortened and played at a softer dynamic. It's important that the student practices these hands separately so they learn the independence of each line. Later in the piece, the left hand plays thirds and clusters. This is good um, to help build the bridge of the left hand as this sound kind of mimics the sound of crows squawking at each other. There's different dynamic levels between the hands. Seen here, the left hand plays forte followed by piano, while the right hand plays mezzo piano and grows to forte. Again, it'll be good for the student to practice hands separately so they can fully learn the independence of dynamics between the hands. Asiginak also introduces two note slurs in the right hand. So it's important that this teacher goes over how to play this properly as to not build too much tension in the hand and to place emphasis on the first note and release on the second. Overall, this is a great piece to play music inspired by the Anishinaabe musical traditions. There are clusters in the left hand that will be fun for students to mimic the sound of crows, but also to help develop the bridge in the, keeping the hand stable. There's consistent syncopation in the right hand. This will easily cause the student to rush, so they need to help have a refined sense of pulse and rhythm, and this will help strengthen that. There are many dynamic changes throughout the piece and dynamic differences between the hands. There's both detached and legato articulations for the student to work on while playing them both at the same time in different hands. There's also a story to influence the character of the piece and help um, develop their sense of musicality and um, keep the piece interesting and exciting for them. I will now perform Mimi Andeg by Barbara Isiginak. 